Hemoglobin is the primary oxygen carrier in our blood. It delivers the oxygen from the lungs to the tissues of our body. Now recall that hemoglobin consists of four individual polypeptide subunits and each one of these polypeptide subunits contains a single heme group that is capable of binding oxygen molecules. Now because these four polypeptides can interact with one another, our hemoglobin displays something called cooperativity. And what that means is, if we take a fully unsaturated deoxyhemoglobin protein and one of the heme groups accepts an oxygen molecule, then that will create a conformational change in the entire structure and that will cause the other three unoccupied heme groups to become much more likely to accept additional oxygen molecules. Likewise, if we have a fully saturated oxyhemoglobin molecule and one of the heme groups unloads or releases an oxygen molecule, then that will create a conformational change in the structure of the four polypeptides and that will make it more likely for the other three occupied heme groups to actually release an oxygen molecule. So this is what we mean by cooperativity. Now, this leads to the sigmoidal shape, the S shape of the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve that can be seen in the following diagram. So, the blue curve is the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. So, this S shaped sigmoidal curve. Now, the y axis is, as always, the percent saturation of hemoglobin for this blue curve, and the x axis is the partial pressure of oxygen given to us in millimeters of mercury. Now, when the hemoglobin actually takes the oxygen from the lungs and brings it to the muscle tissue of our body, it has to drop that oxygen off. Now, the question is, what exactly picks up that oxygen? So, once oxygen is delivered to our muscle tissue, the tissue must be able to store that oxygen for later use. And the protein that is responsible for storing the oxygen in our muscle tissue is known as myoglobin, where myo means muscle and globin means a polypeptide subunit. Now, in fact, if we compare the structure of hemoglobin to myoglobin, we'll see that myoglobin, unlike hemoglobin, actually consists of only a single polypeptide subunit and that single polypeptide subunit contains one heme group and that means that myoglobin can only bind a single diatomic oxygen molecule. On top of that, because we don't have more than two uh, polypeptide subunits within myoglobin to actually interact with one another and create cooperativity, that implies that myoglobin will not display cooperativity and so it will not create a sigmoidal curve. And the shape of our oxygen myoglobin dissociation curve is given by the red curve. So once again, the y-axis is percent saturation of myoglobin and the x axis is the partial pressure of diatomic oxygen given in millimeters of mercury. Now, the next question is, what exactly determines the difference between these two curves? Well, it's basically the cooperativity, the fact that hemoglobin is cooperative. It's, it consists of four individual polypeptide subunits, and these units interact with one another. That creates this S shape. But because myoglobin does not have those four polypeptide subunits, it only contains one, it contains the following curve. Now, the next question is, what exactly is the physiological significance of these two curves? And how do these curves actually correspond to the function of these two different 
and proteins. So let's begin inside our lungs. So inside our lungs, we have a partial pressure of oxygen that is equal to about 100 millimeters of mercury. So if we take a look at the following curve and we plot a vertical line going up from the 100 point and then we check the corresponding y value for both of these curves we see that according to these curves both myoglobin and hemoglobin are about 98 percent saturated with oxygen when inside our lungs now this is not the important point the port the important point lies in this line so when our tissue is exercising its partial pressure of oxygen can drop to as low as 20 millimeters of mercury so let's suppose this is the partial pressure of our oxygen inside the exercising lines uh, inside the exercising tissue and if we draw a straight vertical line upward and now we check the corresponding y values for both of these curves this is where our difference will actually lie for the case of hemoglobin we see that at 20 mmhg our saturation percent saturation is equal to about 32 percent but for our myoglobin the percent saturation is still above 90 percent it's around 91 percent and what that means is our hemoglobin is a much better carrier of oxygen because it's actually able to efficiently and effectively deliver that oxygen to the tissues that are exercising inside our body while myoglobin has a much greater affinity for oxygen and it is much better at actually storing that oxygen until the partial pressure of oxygen inside our tissues is extremely low. So once again, according to the hemoglobin curve, the percent saturation of hemoglobin in the exercising tissues is about 32%. However, the percent saturation of myoglobin in the at the same partial pressure value of 20 mmHg is equal to about 91%. So if we find the difference in percent of hemoglobin and the difference in percent of myoglobin between these two points, between the lungs and the exercising tissue, then for the case of hemoglobin, we have a difference in 66%, which basically means there will be a change in 66%. So 66% of our hemoglobin will fully unload the oxygen to the tissues of our body but only 7% of the myoglobin this difference here will unload that oxygen to our tissues so this information tells us that myoglobin binds oxygen much more tightly than our hemoglobin does and this means that myoglobin would not make a very good oxygen carrier inside our blood because it will not be able to effectively and quickly unload our oxygen to the exercising tissues of our body that require that oxygen now on the other hand my Myoglobin, because it has a very high affinity to oxygen, it is a very good protein because it's able, it's it is a very good protein store, which basically means it can actually store our oxygen inside the muscle tissue until our partial pressure drops to a very low value. In fact, we see from this graph that when the partial pressure of oxygen inside the muscle tissue drops to about two millimeters of mercury, which is a very small value, the myoglobin will only unload about 50% of that uh, oxygen. So that means myoglobin has a very high affinity to oxygen, much more than hemoglobin does, and it only unloads that oxygen when the partial pressure, when the oxygen level inside our tissue drops to an extremely low quantity, below 2 millimeters of mercury. So this is the major difference between myoglobin and hemoglobin and their functionality, their difference in functionality 
probability can be explained by these two different uh, hemoglobin dissociate uh, oxygen hemoglobin and oxygen myoglobin dissociation curves.